<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. At the outset, let me thank uh, Dr. Deepak Kunawat and uh, Abdul Mazid and many more uh, for reminding me to start the discussion. Unfortunately, the life has occupied so much patients in emergency. By the time I'm reaching home, it is becoming uh, almost uh, 1 a.m. in the morning. So that is the reason every day I'm thinking to start early part of the day, first finish live discussion and then go to hospital. But that's not somehow happening. So I try my best to not fail you uh, to discuss every day. And you also please make it a point uh, to take the test before you join the discussion. And every day we will have a 100 MCQ test and discussion according to the schedule. And on every Sunday, we will have a grand test and discussion. So let's make the great beginning. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you comrades? Can you listen my voice loud and clear? Can you please punch? Yes. Good. Make us loud and clear. So let's make the great beginning, uh, uh, doctor. Yolk muzzle, yolk muzzle of the right superior rectuses, the left inferior oblique. So what is the yolk muzzle? If one elevates, the other depresses. If one intorts, other extorts. So the dextro elevation, the two yoke muscles are the right superior rectus and left inferior oblique. For limo version of the yoke muscles, the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus are the yoke muscles. So you should know what is the yoke muscle of the other. Now, what is the average volume of the orbit? This kind of questions are like putting the gun on the neck and expecting you to answer. So it is 30 ml is what you need to remember. Nice to see Manik Andan, Pratap Reddy, and many more who are all online. Good. So after inoculation, the total volume of the orbit is 30 ml decreases by about 7 ml. Now, sympathetic innovation, Muller's muscle which elevates the lid has sympathetic innervation. That's the reason in Horner syndrome, what will happen? The Muller muscle doesn't work because the sympathoplegia, that's the reason there is a ptosis is what you need to remember. So what is the equatorial diameter of the lens, doctor? It is nine millimeters. Anteroposterior or the polar diameter of the lens is about five millimeter. From where are the retinal blood vessels developed? Paraxial mesoderm. It is the one which is just lateral to the neural tube on both sides, and it gives rise to the somites and mesoderm is what you need to remember. Now, embryology, embryology of the eye is one of the favorite questions. Out of the 10 MCQs coming from ophthalmology, at least one question from embryology. So crystalline lens, corneal epithelium, epithelium of the lacrimal glands, all of them are derived from the surface ectoderm. Whereas the sclera is derived from the mesenchyme, which is surrounding the optic cup is what you need to basically remember. Now, the eye in the newborn is hypermetropic. Always remember, smaller eye, hypermetropic, bigger eye, myopic. What is the unit of the light which is remitted from the surface? It is Lambert. So the CGS unit of luminance is Lambert. 
it measures the intensity of the light emitted in all the directions per unit area of the surface. And uh, the SI unit of luminance is candela per square meter. So one Lambert is equal to candela per square centimeter. Lux is the SI unit of illumination of the surface. One Lux is equal to 0 0.9290 foot candles. So in the photometry, as a measure of intensity of light, we use the Lux as a SI unit of illuminance. Lumen is the SI unit for measuring the flux of the light being produced by the source of the light or received by the surface. So in FAKIA, what is the spectacle which is being prescribed? When do you prescribe? Typically after six weeks. This is one of the very standard question. Standard previous year questions. This kind of questions, if you do wrong, we will go at least 50,000 to 1 lakh ranks behind. So be very careful. The size of the eyeball in myopia is bigger. So how do you treat a myopia with refractive error of two diopters? We use spectacles. So concave, concave lens is the one which is being prescribed. Generally, the rule of myopia, don't overcorrect the myopia. High myopia almost always is slightly undercorrected is what you need to remember. But simple myopia up to six diopters can be fully corrupted. Simple myopia up to six diopters is fully corrected. Very good. Now, typically in the children, who have an uncorrected myopia, they may lose interest in the surroundings due to the blurred vision. That's the reason they need to wear the glasses constantly in high myopia. But whenever you are correcting high myopia, you need to undercorrect it because if you use a very strong concave lens and overcorrect it or fully correct it, then that will diminish the size of the retinal image is what you need to remember. So whenever there is a very high axial myopia of around 21 diopters, it is corrected by the removal of the lens and refractive surgeries are being used nowadays. Radial keratotomy, photorefractive keratectomy, laser in situ keratomiliosis, keratomiliosis and epikeratophakia. Kerato means cornea. So, refractive, I mean radial keratotomy, radial keratotomy, whenever there is a low degree myopia only, you can use radial keratotomy. Now, what the treatment of choice of high myopia, contact lens? So, radial keratotomy is only used for low degrees of myopia. That's what you need to remember. Enisokinia refers to difference in the size of the retinal image, unequal retinal images. Whenever enisokinia is there, there's a difficulty to fuse one big and one small retinal image and that lead to discomfort, visual confusion and headache. So whenever refractive anisokinia is there, you correct it with contact lens. So that the contact lens will minimize that magnification which is caused otherwise by the lens. If you use the glasses, then uh, for high myopia, it can lead to refractive anisokinia. So that can be avoided by using contact lens. The most common cause of the anisokinia Tomorrow exam, if they ask, what is your answer, doctor? Aphakia is what you need to remember. 
Once more, Dr. Manikandan, everybody, can you please punch his voice loud and clear for all of you? Which is the serious complication of degenerative myopia. Vitreous get liquefied. The pathological myopia is degenerative process. And uh, typically, uh, the refractive error, if you take, whenever we actively grow, it rapidly increases and it will reach to 20 to 30 diopters by the time the person reaches 25th year of life. And there's also a hereditary tendency for the patients to get pathological myopia. And uh, bigger the eye, greater the myopia, smaller the eye, greater the hypermetropia. Don't forget that. And the bigger the eye is greater the myopia. So where is it becoming bigger? All the elongation of the eyeball occurs mainly because the degeneration of the posterior half of the sclera. And that lead to posterior staphyloma in the patients who are having pathological myopia. So this is the ocular fundus in a myopic individual who show chorioretinal degeneration with a large atrophic area. You are able to see in pathological myopia. What is this called? Myopic crescent is what you see in pathological myopia. In pathological myopia, how are the pupils? Dilated pupils, prominent eyes, convergent squint, negative kappa angle. These are the points you need to remember in pathological myopia. The blind spot is enlarged. Peripheral visual wheel is constricted. That is pathological myopia. There is a vitreous degeneration floaters, a big optic disc with a myopic crescent with nasal super traction because of the extension of the retina on the nasal side of the disc. There will be chorioretinal atrophic patches at the posterior pole. Foster fuchs spots at the macula because of the hemorrhage into the choroid is another important feature of the high pathological myopia. All the pathological changes in pathological myopia, you need to be very, very clear about, doctor. Thank you, Manikandan, for the feedback. So, retinal hemorrhages, lattice degeneration, retinal detachment, complicated cataract, they're all the complications in very high pathological myopia. Where do we see pseudopapillitis? Whenever the eye becomes small in hypermetropic individual, then it looks like papillitis, but not really papillitis. A real papill... ...individual is what you need to remember. Why the pupillary reflex? Leukocoria. Leukocoria, it is called as. It is a feature in retinoblastoma, complete retinal detachment, and endophthalmitis is what you need to remember. Is the voice loud and clear for all of you, doctor? Can you please punch? Is it clear? I am sometimes worried. Uh, because of, uh, yeah. Can you please punch whether the voice, very good. Thank you, uh, Manikandan, for the feedback. In retinal artery angiogram, where will you inject the dye? Into the peripheral vein. Angiography. In central serous retinopathy, we do angiography. This is called smoke stack appearance in central serous retinopathy. The dye spreads laterally forming a mushroom or umbrella pattern. It's called smoke stack, smoke stack appearance. Snellen's chart is used to know the visual acuity. 
Visual acuity always talk about central vision. Macula is the area which gives uh, all our visual acuity. So Snellen chart tests the visual acuity, not the refraction. Now, in fluorescent angiography, it is into the anterocubital vein, not into the eye, but into the hand, the dye is injected. So Medox rod, laser inferometry, two point discrimination, they all talk about the visual acuity caused by the macula, macular function is being tested. So this is the, tomorrow, this is a very important uh, image based MCQ in the exam. So you should know cardboard test, Medox rod test, entopic view test, Amsler's grid, they're all laser interferometry. They all are testing the, they're all testing the central vision is what you need to remember doctor. They're all testing the central vision. Now, The graph of the moment. Yes, thank you, Manikandan. I think this is a little better. Right? Uh, now the slide visibility is much better, Mani. The graph of the moment of the eye is called nystagmogram. Keratometer assess the thickness. Tomorrow, this is an image based question. What is this instrument? Keratometer. 25 year old lady suddenly develops unilateral loss of the vision. Unilateral loss of the vision. Ill sustained pupillary reaction. What is that called? Marcus Gunn pupil. Marcus Gunn pupil. Please go back to the score learning app, doctor. In the score learning app, we discussed in a great detail. You have a search functionality in the score learning app. You have a search functionality there. If you type Marcus Gunn, you get all the notes and all the MCQs based on the Marcus Gunn for you to do the revision. It is seen in retro bulbar neuritis. In, so the pain increases by pressure upon the globe. There is a local tenderness in the region of the insertion of the superior rectus. There is a headache, neurologia in retrobulbar neuritis. The colored objects look washed out. There is a depression of the light brightness. The depth perception for the moving objects is impaired in retrobulbar neuritis. What is that called? Pulfrix phenomena in retrobulbar neuritis. Very nice to see Vinisha and many more who are all online. So we started a learning center in Amir Pet near Satyam Theater in Hyderabad. Every day morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. We have a live class every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have a full scale grand test. So all these sessions are live broadcasted. So every 120 days we finish 100. 100 subject wise daily tests according to a schedule. And uh, 20 on every Sunday, full scale grand test and discussion. So there will be three cycles like that every year, three into 120 days. So please take every opportunity to subscribe, come to the live class and enjoy the preparation doctor. Right? Now, indirect ophthalmoscopy is done for the periphery of the retina. Once for direct versus indirect ophthalmoscopy, that list to panna padega. Colored halos are a feature of both cataract and closed angle glaucoma. So how do you differentiate? Colored halos of the glaucoma can be broken in Fickham's test. Cannot be broken. Whereas the colored halos of the cataract are broken. Whereas colored halos of the glaucoma are not broken in Fickham's test. And the halos, because the conjunctivitis, if you irrigate the discharge from the conjunctival sac, they will be disappearing. 
So Fingham's is to differentiate colored halos of glaucoma from cataract. Cataract will break because cataract is lens. Lens will break, whereas glaucoma doesn't break is what you need to remember. Visual activity in the infants is tested with the help of Landol's ring. So the little babies cannot tell. So subjective tests we can't use. We have to use an objective test. So Landolt ring is the one which is being used. Now, slit lamp biomicroscopy. It is based on the principle of focal illumination. It's a big, uh, deep concept in ophthalmology. Let's not get into that. But diffuse broad beam illumination in a patient. You are able to see in herpes simplex keratin uveitis we use diffuse broad beam illumination. Whereas slit lamp biomicroscopy is all about focal illumination. Muran sulcer is found with the tangential illumination. Then Fuchs dystrophy. We use slit lamp and focal illumination. And melanoma like lesions are found once more with slit beam illumination. It is a virus lead to acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. So in acute chem hemorrhagic conjunctivitis treated with steroids, you see a secondary corneal ulcer. Ropey discharge from the eye is a feature of spring catena, which is called vernal keratoconjunctivitis. It is intense itching, photophobia, white ropey discharge with well-defined polygonal raised areas of papillary hypertrophy along the palpebral conjunctiva is what you need to remember. The most effective treatment of the early stages of the trachoma is systemic sulfonamides. Azithromycin, tetracycline, two antibiotics for trachoma control. Azithromycin is better than tetracycline. It is the drug of choice. Hypopion is seen in gonococcus, fungus infection, pneumococcal infection. So what is hypopion? The disc-shaped central corneal ulcer with hypopion, where that sterile pus gravitates down into the anterior chamber along with violent iridocyclitis is called hypopion pneumococcus streptococcus gonococcus proteus vulgaris they are all capable of producing the ulcer corneal ulcer pseudomonas lead to sloughing of the corneal ulcer with a greenish look hypopion is found in mycotic corneal ulcers a pneumococcus lead to ulcer serpents, corneal ulceration. Whenever the fifth cranial nerve is not working, so you should know cornea sensory supply afferent comes from fifth cranial nerve. Try the minute. Anything falls on our cornea immediately, fifth cranial nerve will tell the brain, and seventh cranial nerve will lead to the closure of the eyelid. Closure of the eyelid. So for the coronal reflex, afferent pathway is fifth cranial nerve. Efferent pathway is the seventh cranial nerve, is what you need to remember. Delen is a localized thinning of the peripheral cornea. About 1.5 by 2 mm due to the localized dehydration is also called Fuchs Delen. Thickness of the cornea is measured by pachymetry. Anterior lenticonus is a feature of Alport syndrome. So, typically in the Alport syndrome, you can see anterior lent lenticonus, slit lamp image of the anterior lenticonus. So, what is Alport? Alport is an autosomal residue disorder, progressive hemorrhagic nephropathy, bilateral high tone deafness along with the anterior lenticonus. So, in Alport, you also find spherophakia, antipolar and posture cortical cataracts, fundus lesions like drusen. But very important, frequently tested about Alport is anterior lenticonus is what you need to remember. Now, I leave the literature for you. Please go back to the... Explanatory answers which are made.
available explanatory answers which are available on the uh, web portal online tests everyday daily mock test and sunday grand test along with discussions everything is made available in the uh, on the online test engine on the web right so please do subscribe to that and get activation and you can go back all these explanatory answers are there the question is taking a test is very important and participating in discussion more important than that now penetrating keratoplasty it is effective in keratoconus bullous keratopathy corneal dystrophy in all these conditions so what are all the indications of a penetrating keratoplasty they can be optical like keratoconus corneal dystrophy bullous keratopathy therapeutic whenever there is any impending corneal perforation tectonic to restore the cornea after the perforation or it can be cosmetic to improve the look the donor cornea is obtained from the eye bank so what are the corneal preservation facilities mk medium is the one which is being used and any freshly procured cornea within 2 to 4 hours often will give the best result pterygium ka matlab kya hota hai pterygium meaning wing triangular encroachment of the conjunctiva into the cornea usually on the nasal side a stationary thin pale pterygium never warrant succession so what are the various pterygium surgeries doctor dombrens operation macrenol operation there are few names what are the commonest cause of keratitis acanth amoeba in soft contact lens users a patient with contact lens develops corneal infection acanth amoeba keratitis is there how do you want to treat polyhexamethylene biguanide is the one which is being used corneal curvature is quantified with keratometry posterior staphyloma is due to high myopia this is a degenerative myopia where posterior part of the sclera got abnormally enlarged so subretinal hemorrhage from neovascular membrane formed in the choroid in degenerative myopia these are the fuke spots because the choroidal neovascular membrane whenever there is any degenerative myopia is what you need to remember in secondary glaucoma with uveitis we don't use pilocarpin we use atropin epinephrine phenylephrine etc etc you need to dilate the pupil atropin sulfate 1% drops are ointment 2 to 3 times a day it gives rest to the eye paralyzes the ciliary muscle dilates the pupil prevents the formation of the posterior cinicae all these are the advantages of putting a midriatic like atropin in case of the anterior uveitis but if the patient has atropin sensitivity then scopolamine phenylephrine can also be used prednisolone 60 to 80 mg per day is given orally for 2 weeks and gradually tapered gradually tapered now doctor pilocarpin is not used pilocarpin lead to constriction of the pupil you don't use pilocarpin acute iridocyclitis what do you use atropin sympathetic ophthalmitis after the trauma it takes 3 weeks to 12 weeks for the sympathetic ophthalmitis to develop uveitis will start as early as 5 days or as late as 50 years after the injury also after 50 years also but majority of the cases they develop 3 weeks to 3 months after the trauma so what is the most common complication of iridocyclitis doctor secondary glaucoma so what are all the complications of uveitis complicated cataract 
little lentil membrane, pan uveitis, little involvement, secondary glaucoma, thesis bulbi, etc. etc. Quapes, busaka nodules are the feature of granulomatous uveitis. So busaka nodule typically you see in sarcoidosis. These are the nodules that develop on the iris. Iris, you know, right? So, sarcoidosis, TB, syphilis, what? Koenagi, Harada syndrome. They all, any of them can lead to Busakka nodules. These are called Koyapis nodules, which are seen in sarcoidosis. Koyapis are big nodules found along the pupillary margin in granulomatous uveitis. Acute anterior uveitis in ankylizing spondylitis. Recurrent attacks occur, fibrous reaction occur in the anterior chamber. There's a narrowing of the joint spaces and sclerosis of the sacroiliac joint. Sacroiliac joint, uh, ileitis, sacroiliitis is the classical of ankylizing spondylitis. Generally, all these rheumatological disorders like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, everything is more common in females. But ankylizing spondylitis is more common in the male, is what you need to remember. In choroidal melanoma, it is the size of the tumor, cytology and extraocular extension. They are the important prognostic features. Choroidal melanoma is the most common primary malignant intraocular tumor and the second most common type of primary malignant melanoma in the entire body. What do you find, doctor? Spindle A, spindle B are the two types of cells. And uh, uh, cytology is also an important uh, indicator of prognosis. This is the dome-shaped choroidal melanoma. Fluorescent angiogram of the choroidal melanoma. Late fluorescent angiogram of the choroidal melanoma. T2 weighted MRI showing a anterior choroidal melanoma. This is the enucleated eye with an advanced choroidal melanoma. And these are the spindle A cells, spindle B cells in the uveal melanoma. And you placed a radioactive plug in the posterior choroidal melanoma as a part of the treatment. This is what you need to remember. So nice to listen from Dr. Aditya. I'm very humble to know that uh, Aditya did medicine from Government Medical College, Kottayam. Very nice, very nice. Very nice to see doctor. Every time when students give a feedback like this, it makes the teacher heave in his heart uh, with a realm of nostalgia. So thank you very much for uh, saying so. So doctor, uh, the real inspiration always comes from uh, the wonderful students like you. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you remind, a teacher will not remember. Because so many things, the dying patients, patients with MI, patients with sepsis, patients with pneumonia, patients with atrial fibrillation, patients with stroke. Oh my God. Clinical medicine is like addiction, like alcohol. So, Every day I was thinking, oh, I should start uh, taking a discussion and I'm missing it. But today one of the students said, sir, if you don't spend your time to teach us, we lose that momentum of preparation. So thanks for not being able to get my time in the last uh, three weeks. Let us restart and uh, 
until the day of exam we continue daily discussion so thank you for reminding me now doctor the normal intraocular tension is 15 to 22 millimeters of mercury patient with acute glaucoma what will you do to the other eye prophylactically we do peripheral iridectomy gentamicin if you give intravitreally lead to macular toxicity Horner syndrome may meiosis hota hai, not the midriasis. What is the most common type of color blindness, doctor? It is the red green deficiency is the most common. 8% of the male population have that. So if you have a, a 200 batch in medical college, 16 students will have red green deficiency. Even I am also color blind. The patient is on follow up with you after nucleation. After nucleation, a proper sized artificial prosthetic eye. When will you put it, doctor? About 20 days. So, what are the indications of nucleation and devisceration of the eye? Is one of the favorite topic of the examiners. Painful blind eye, intraocular tumor, perforating injury to the eye, large retained intraocular foreign body, androstaphyloma, ciliary staphyloma, and the process can be fitted in the socket after three weeks. So please don't forget this list, doctor. You need to, I already gave you 1200 pages notes in which all these lists are made available for you to do the revision. Painful red with red eye with vertically oval pupil. It is acute congestive glaucoma. So acute conjunctivitis versus acute androuveitis versus acute congestive glaucoma. Colored halos is the feature of conjunctivitis and glaucoma. Vision is normal in conjunctivitis. Pain is very severe in the eye in acute congestive glaucoma. Discharge is mucoprolent in conjunctivitis, whereas it is watery in uveitis and glaucoma. Injection, ciliary injection, conjunctival injunction. It is superficial conjunctival in conjunctivitis is what you need to remember. Now, doctor. Uh, yes. So I leave the literature for you. This is a, because this is a very standard question. You need to remember this list. Make it a point. I am going to do the revision of differences between these three: conjunctivitis, uveitis, glaucoma. Definitely, one question is going to come. Circumcorneal congestion, right pupil is constricted. Andre chamber is normal depth. Andre chamber of the left eye is shallow. What is the cause? Uveitis. Intraocular lens compared to glasses. Better field of vision. Better underwater vision. If you're a swimmer, no optical aberration. The main advantage of lens implantation is you restore the vision, both central and peripheral, almost to the precataractus point. So what are all the indications of intraocular lens implantation? Parkinsonism patient, mentally handicapped patients, high degree of anisokinia, macular degeneration, retinitis pigmentosa, Jogren syndrome, where the patient has an intolerance for contact lens, or whenever there is a monocular cataract with a good visual acuity in the other eye, there are all the indications. Certainly, what are the indications of anterior chamber lens implantation? What are the complications of the anterior chamber IOL? You have to be very sure, doctor, out of the 10 questions, one question invariably is going to come from I-O-L. I love you. So I-O-L, you have to be very sure. Definitely one question is going to come. I-O-L, what are the contraindications? Corneal dystrophy. Any proliferative diabetic retinopathy, non-motivated patient, corneal endothelial decompensation, if it is there, if you put the IOL, it will further worsen the cornea. Any recurrent ocular inflammation, uncontrolled ocular inflammation in contraindication. All visual reflexes developed by vernia. 
gold, silver, platinum, they are all inert foreign objects, not the copper. Trabeculum lectomy, what will it lead to? Hemorrhage, shallow antechamber, choroidal degeneration. There are all the complications of the trabeculectomy, which is done as a treatment of the glaucoma, glaucoma filtration procedure. So what are the post-operative complications? Flat bleb, bleb leak, flat anterior chamber, blebitis, supracoroidal hemorrhage, hypotony, cataract formation, and a small encapsulated bleb. There are all the complications of trabeculectomy is what you need to remember. Nice to see Dr. Ayush Bharati. Very good afternoon. So daily we will meet, tell your friends. Whenever possible, early morning 7 to 9 is the best time for me. So that from 10 o'clock till midnight patients are on my head. But whenever it is not possible, in some or the other part of the day, definitely we will have a discussion. So go to the online test question bank on the web. Take the test every day and be ready for discussion. Every day you, we do test and discussion, T and D. 10,000 questions get covered in 100 days and 20 full scale grant tests and discussion totally 120 days a set of four months is the best time where you can finish the preparation periorbital injection is given into periorbital space periorbital fat is highly vascularized bullseye macula is a feature of chloroquine chloroquine toxicity like we give hydroxychloroquine S for a long period of time. So you need to check their eyes, bullseye, maculopathy. Minor's nystagmus is a rotatory nystagmus. If a year old insulin dependent diabetes patient on insulin past 10 years, progressive painless loss of vision, you'll think of tractional retinal detachment not involving the macula. So when there is any proliferative diabetic retinopathy, there's a tractional retinal detachment. Similarly, trauma is a cause of tractional retinal detachment. Eels disease, plastic uveitis, retinopathy of prematurity, they are all the causes where there is a development of fibrosis and uh, tractional ret retinal detachment is what you need to remember. So it is the NADP H dependent aldose reductase which will con convert the high sugar into aldol pathway leading to osmotic overhydration of the lens leading to the development of the cataract. So keratico uh, Spontaneous, unknown etiology, different types are there. Trauma can predispose. This is the angiogram of a kerotico cavernous fistula. Now, scintillating scotoma is a feature of migraine, as that some lightening is happening before their eyes. What are the most common complications of renal transplant? CMV retinitis can occur. Dalen Fuchs lesions are the feature of sympathetic ophthalmitis. Diplopia, dysphagia, dysarthria, muscle weakness, pseudo exophthalmos is a feature of high myopia, lid retraction, facial nerve paralysis, etc. etc. The four causes of pseudo exophthalmos. Really, it is not exophthalmos, pseudo exophthalmos. Very nice to see 12 online students even after restarting the discussion after a long time. Contracted socket, chronic low-grade infection, chronic mechanical irritation, irradiation, 
all of them lead to a contracted socket, orbital socket. Tears are produced in the newborn after four weeks. So first to four weeks, the baby is crying without tears. Cologoma, it is the medial half of the upper eyelid. The commonest sight is medial half of the upper eyelid. If you don't know this in exam, you are gone. It's like Kaun Banega PG Pati program. Small ulcers that bleed on removing the yellow crust on the lid of the margin. It is ulcerative blepharitis. It can be squamous blepharitis, ulcerative blepharitis, all this debris which is being found I mean eyelashes in a patient of blepharitis. This is ulcerative blepharitis classically. Most common type of lid carcinoma is basal cell carcinoma. So this is the biopsy proven basal cell carcinoma of the upper lid margin. You can note the loss of the cilia, medarosis in the area where the tumor is there. This is the medial canthal lower eyelid basal cell carcinoma. Note the fairly nodular appearance. Now, a patient with right homonymous hemianopia with a saccadic pursued movement and defective optokinetic nystagmus, where is the lesion doctor? Parietal lobe. So you can see a 46 year old with acute confusional state. He was able to see the letters on snell chart but unable to read them. Visual field examination was difficult as he could not maintain the fixation. And this is how you are able to see the left parietal lobe hemorrhage, which is responsible. So what is Gersman syndrome? It is a lesion of the left parietal lobe, which is the dominant parietal lobe in a right-handed individual. Delin syndrome means bilateral parietal lobe lesions. So typically when parietal lobe lesion is there, hemispatial neglect is a classical feature. So Gersman is due to the dominant angular gyrus, echalicalia, agraphia, right cleft disorientation, agnosia. They're all the features of the Gersman syndrome. Bellint, there is a disjointed psychic paralysis of the gaze with the hepa, hepazoid scanning. It's called optic ataxia, optic apraxia in Bellint syndrome. Superior oblique nerve, trochlea. Primary deviation, then secondary deviation, if there's a paralytic screen. Once more, there's a table doctor. Paralytic con concomitant squint. All the differences you need to be very sure about. So when the sound eye fixes, the deviation shown by the affected eye is called primary deviation. But if the paralyzed eye is used for fixation by covering the sound eye, the deviation shown by the sound eye, when the when uncovered is called secondary deviation. Secondary deviation is always greater than primary deviation in paralytic squint. Please don't forget. We discussed all this in a great detail, doctor, in our uh, uh, in our regular classroom. 18 year old boy, history of tennis injury. From where will he get the bleeding that lead to hyphema, circulus, iridis major? Commotio retinae is a feature of concussion injury, also called Berlin sedima. 50 year old with orbital mass, anemia, hypergamma globulonemia. Think about multiple myeloma. Retinoblastoma, what do you see? Intraorbital calcification, multiple cranial deposits, widening of the optic foramen, they're all the features of retinoblastoma. A large hemangium of the lid, along with glaucoma, think about Stooge Weber, nevius, flamius on one side, Hemangium of the choroid, angium of the meninges, infantile glaucoma, they're all the features of Stooge Weber, is what you need to remember. 25 year old, sudden painless loss of vision, no history of trauma, no fundal glow, 
that is a feature of vitreous hemorrhage. You can see the severe vitreous hemorrhage. Sudden loss of vision is a feature of retinal detachment, central retinal artery occlusion, retrobulbar neuritis. In papilledema, you can see, patient can see, that is called papilledema. Patient can't see, you can't see, that is retrobulbar neuritis. You can see, but patient cannot see, that is papillitis. So you should know the three types. Once more, you can't see, patient can't see, that is retrobulbar neuritis. You can see, but patient can't see, papillitis. You can see, patient can see, that is papilledema. A female patient, loss of vision in both eyes, normal pupil reflex, normal fundus, but visual evoked response show extinguished response. That means there's a classical feature of cortical blindness. Their normal pupillary reflex. Pupillary reflex doesn't require to communicate with the cerebral cortex. It is all happening at the level of the midbrain. There's a reason fundus normal, normal pupillary reflex, but visually evoked response is extinguished, is cortical blindness. Enlargement of the blind spot is a feature of papilledema. Berlin sedima is seen in concussion injury. Lattice degeneration is typically associated with retinal detachment in about one third of patients. So this is an example of lattice degeneration with hole. Now, ophthalmic change initially seen in diabetes is microaneurysms. There are multiple pinhead dilatation of the venules at the posture pole. Microaneurysms are the earliest clinical sign of diabetic retinopathy. Then black pigment along the vein and waxy tailing of fundoscopy is a feature of retinitis pigmentosa. Bony spicule appearance, atrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium, retinal arterioles show attenuation. They're all the features of retinitis pigmentosa. So what is this? This is polydactyly in Vardet Beadle syndrome associated with retinitis pigmentosa. What is this, doctor? Don't forget, these are all image-based equations. Typical bony spicule appearance. Patient of retinitis pigmentosa, retinal detachment. Um, so what are all the things that lead to hyperpigment retinal epithelium with bony spicule appearance, doctor? Retinitis pigmentosa, rubella, retinal detachment, syphilis, all of them, any of them. Commonest cause of loss of vision whenever there's a proliferative diabetic retinopathy is macular edema. Ring scotoma is the feature of retinitis pigmentosa. So what is the main aim of treating retinal detachment, doctor? Repair of the defect. Repair of the defect. So typically there's a retinal break which is the source for the retinal detachment. Photocoagulation and diatherming, etc., etc. Largest size of the intravitreal C3 F8 of 0.3 ml is reached by 72 hours. So all the treatment modalities of retinal detachment, you need to be sure. Crystalline lens, from where does it get the nourishment of aqueous humor, vitreous humor? Cornea gets from tears and the aqueous humor. A soft contact lens user present to you with pain, watering, photophobia, white spots in the center of cornea. What do you want to do? Start frequent antibiotic eye drops after discontinuing the contact lens. So the last question for the today's evening, doctor, what is the most common complication of the anterior chamber? Lens, intraocular lens is glaucoma, is what you need to remember. So with this, we come to the end of the today's Chai Pe Charcha with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. So, 
in a year we have 360 days in 360 days 120 120 120 three cycles in 120 days 100 days daily 100 mcqs subject test and discussion subject test is made available online so take the test and come to discussion be motivated to do the revision every sunday full scale grand test take the test before and 10 to 1 there is a live discussion so any day you start preparation 120 days i am available to make you fully charged with 100 daily subject tests with 20 grand tests and discussion so tell all your friends if you are from hyderabad please come we have a learning center in amir pet hyderabad we love to see the students we love to study along with you and when you give the good news hey i got md general medicine seat and a general surgery seat that is another feather in our cap and we feel accomplished that day and that is our greatest dream for all of you good luck and we'll see you tomorrow once more